Whenever I am tagged in the hygiene subreddit, I brace myself for what I'm about to see. This woman says, my gross ex-husband. She says, we were together for three years before we got married and he was clean, showered, and brushed his teeth. She says, we got married and all of a sudden he stopped showering and brushing his teeth on his off days. Ill. He only showered and brushed before going into work. Never before bed. Four day weekend, no shower or brushing for four days. I couldn't sleep because of his rancid breath, even if we were both facing the opposite ways. I stopped having smacks with him. I asked him to fix it. Nothing changed. I got pissed and told him to fix his hygiene or I'm going to divorce him. I waited six months and I checked out of marriage completely. I avoided being home. He finally asked me if I wanted to be with him and I said no. He asked me why. I told him that he's gross and that I did tell him to fix his hygiene or I'm going to divorce him. He didn't even try to improve. He was dumbfounded and said he didn't think I was serious. He cried and begged, but I was done. I couldn't look at him anymore. My hygiene has never changed. I kept taking care of myself. He also grew a pot belly and was in shape when we met. These people think that women will not leave. Women do not need a man for survival's sake anymore. You have got to maintain yourself. You can't just all of a sudden become a slob. That is gross. People are not living like this anymore. <laughs> Who doesn't brush their teeth? Th that is wild. I wake up and brush my teeth. Before bed, I brush my teeth, unless I just kind of conk out. But usually I brush my teeth. You take a shot, like... I know this whole shower thing. I've seen this in the subreddits and people on social media where they're talking about they don't take a shower every day. And that's kind of wild to me because some days are a two shower type of day. So it doesn't make sense at all for me that people can go four days without taking a shower. Um, yeah, you see my face like I like it doesn't make sense to me. So this is where I was tagged in this from D. Nicole. And the OP says, love Burb, hope she reads this in three things. So I'm giving this OP, AMF underscore PL, a shout out. Hey, here's Burb. Now let's do some of the comments. Um, Adept Ad says, I think he only maintained himself to get a wife. Once he got married, he figured you would have dealt with it because you were married. Well, you see the true him, sorrow, sorrow's prayers, move on with your life. And then the OP says, yes, that's exactly it. He accomplished his goal and let his true self show. The, la the lazy below bare minimum self. SpongeBob, yes, yeah, SpongeBob. Well done on addressing and divorcing so quickly. Hope you find a clean man. West Ruin says exactly this. Your ex has mental issues or mental health issues. A normal person would be embarrassed to be told they smell of offensive B.O. And the thing is, I don't like this social media discourse where we try to assess people's mental health. It may, maybe he's just a slob. Maybe he really thought she would stay. Um, yeah, but like this person below says, just sounds bad mannered and entitled. Hygiene is good manners. And West Ruin says, hygiene is a great bar barometer of mental health. And that could be true. That could be something that you look for. But to assess mental health, I don't think is, um, I don't think people should be doing that on social media. Um, R. Can No More says, wow, I'm truly sorry he did that to you. If it's really been years, he's obviously not going to change. Moderate Liberal says, I shower two times every day and brush a minimum of two times a day. But I would rather get slammed daily in my testicles by a Stephen King book than get married again. Just stay single. Life is so much better. Um, the OP says, same, minus the testicles. <laughs> um, this person says, "Less um, amen, aim brother. Um, this person says, it takes guts to stick by your pew pews, though. And you saw his actions and voiced the consequences and, and very simple requests, which he ignored. His loss. He can go be gross elsewhere. That is crazy and would be an absolute deal breaker for me. Okay, so Arcan No More says, no worries. I saw another comment of yours stating that ruined your dating life. And I totally get it. If that's what you want, then that's perfectly fine. However, if it's due to that trauma and you feel lonely, there are lots of good clean men out there. I wish you luck in whatever you decide to do.
And the OP says, it's not just him. I've been through a worse relationship. I'm not dating, but I'd be open to it if I accidentally met someone I like. I've, I'm fine being single forever, and I don't want to live with anyone again. That's where it seems like a lot of women are moving towards, not wanting to live with a man again. And so these men need to get it together because, truthfully, let's think about this. Are other men going to want to be roommates with men that never clean up, that don't brush their teeth, and that smell funny? It's going to be really rancid at the old man Mojo Dojo Casa House. The old man Mojo Dojo Casa House is going to smell really, really bad. These people don't seem to, within their marriage, want to participate in um, chores. And if hygiene is going to be an issue, it's going to be really bad there. I do want you guys to jump in. Let me know what you think of this one. Don't forget to like, comment, share. So this was posted in the marriage subreddit yesterday. And I think that we're going to come across this phenomenon more and more as more and more women are moving up in the ranks and more of these dudes are failing and flailing in the labor market. She says, my marriage is dying and I need help. So she's 32, he's 35. All right, so she says, married to a 35-year-old guy who I've been with for almost a decade. I'm a doctor and he decided to stop working so he can be at home and help with our 16 month old baby, which is incredible. However, we've been fighting a lot lately and one of the issues seems to be centered around the idea that I'm a poor communicator. So she's a poor communicator, that's what he says. I often come home from 12 hour shifts and there's never any food made for me in the house. Baby is fed, which is great, but nothing for me. I get frustrated, start to cry of anger and disappointment during those moments and that's when he tells me I should have told him I was hungry because he had no idea. That I need to tell him if I need my scrubs washed or breakfast ready. I never carry breakfast with me. Today I left at 5 a.m. empty stomach because I'm too tired to meal plan. I do most of the cooking at home as well. I'm a full parent when I come home. I bathe the baby and do the night routine. When I tell my husband I don't feel appreciated or loved, he tells me that's on me because I'm a poor communicator and I don't tell him that I need to eat at home or work. <laughs> I work my butt off for them every day. I'm a surgeon and this is breaking our marriage because all I want to, all I want is to come home to a warm meal every day or a pre-made breakfast before I leave. I feel depressed. I don't want to break this relationship because my baby is so well taken care of. She says, adding, often when I cry, I want to go out and find something to eat. He often tries to make me something at home, but I don't want it to be that way when I'm all broken and in tears. I want someone who can anticipate some of my needs sometimes. Today, I came out of my 24-hour shift and came home. No coffee, no food. It broke me even more. She says, reading some of these comments, this has been an issue for over nine years where he forgets over and over that I'm a big foodie and feel love through food on the table. We probably have had more than 35 talks about this during the years. He hasn't forgotten. If you've talked about this, he hasn't forgotten. He knows. He's just, just doesn't want to do it. She says, update. I suggested we make a list for meals and schedules. And he called me a micromanager. I guess that didn't work. So before, before his excuse was, she's a poor communicator. Then she says, let's make a list. And now she's a micromanager. In this relationship, this woman cannot win. She can't win. He, he thinks that, I, I don't know. How are you going to be a stay-at-home parent and not do the support stuff? This is the reason why, you know, when I see men talking about that they would be a house husband or a stay-at-home dad. And you know that they don't know all that goes into being a stay-at-home mom. We do so much support for our spouses that, and, and a lot of times it's invisible labor, unpaid and underappreciated. A lot of times moms rolls off. But this mom is a breadwinner and she still comes home and participates in the home life. So she's not even like a breadwinner type of dad because women still want to participate with their children. Um, I don't see how this is going to work if she has to communicate every single day via text because then he'll say that 
she's micromanaging too. Like, I'm on my way home, and yes, I am hungry today. Or, I'm on my way home, on, and it's Wednesday. I am hungry today. Or, honey, could you make me a pot of coffee? Because it has been a long day. Like, why should you have to <laughs> communicate this every single day? Every single day, we as humans are going to get hungry. Have some food ready. You're creating some food or a meal for yourself. Create some for your spouse. Your spouse is the one that is off making the money. Why wouldn't you wash her clothes? If this is the person that is providing for your shelter so you can take care of the baby. This is part of being a stay-at-home person where you are supporting the breadwinner. That's just part of it. All right, y'all. Let's get into some of these comments. Okay, Cross says, I want someone who can anticipate some of my needs sometimes. This person says, that part is on you. The rest is on him. If he's not bright enough to realize your needs, then be explicit about it rather than hoping for him to anticipate things. Make a list of what you need for him to do. Okay, and she did do that and he called her a micromanager. But at the same time, you know that your spouse is going to be hungry every day. What What is this where they're just like, nope, nope, nope. What is that? Um, okay, 1999 rule says, and you don't have to send a message every day to saying, I'm hungry. Please leave food ready for me. You two need to talk and work a plan that works for you. Okay, hon, I appreciate everything you do for our baby. But from now on, can I count on you to also have food ready from when I come home? Also, I think we should divide the workload from the house in this, this, and this way. Does that work for you? Do you have other ideas? It's okay, you're both frustrated, but I think you two really have bad communication or planning issues, and that's not that hard to fix. It is that hard to fix if the other person doesn't really want to participate and support. I think that some of these people are really irritated with the woman being a breadwinner, and they're just going to dig in their heels like, I'm just going to make her feel un I don't know what they're doing I really don't know someone in the comments needs to jump in and let me know what this is where it's like the woman is the breadwinner and the dude is just like I'm just not going to do that part specific ad says I have to agree with the men who see these comments and point out that it would never be acceptable if their positions were reversed if a man said that to a woman who stayed home all day with the baby people would lose their minds if he said oh could you have my food ready and waiting on me too but the thing is, you if there is a stay-at-home mom and the mom is, typically she's making the meals. Like literally, I've been a stay-at-home mom. If I'm cooking for myself, I'm cooking for my husband too. My husband has been away at work when he was the sole provider. I would cook. You don't have to tell a woman, I've been at home. I mean, I've been at work for 12 hours. I'm hungry. You wouldn't have to tell that to your wife every single day. Um, and... And if it were the opposite gender where the man is working and come home and takes care of the baby some, oh my God, the wife would be feel a whole lot more appreciated. That's the reason why you can't just flip the genders, in, especially in um, these social rules, these the social culture right now, because it just doesn't work on reverse. Um, okay, 1990 new rule says, I agree with you 110%, but stating this wouldn't um, be exactly useful advice for OP, so I choose to propose an option. But again, I do agree with you, if the genders were reversed, the wife would be getting tons of hate for not doing the minimum. The woman would be. It's like, why aren't you cooking your di cooking dinner for him as well? It doesn't make sense to not cook dinner for a person that you know is going to come home and be hungry. Okay, here's the OP. She, This is where she said, I talked to him about 30 minutes ago about making a list. He got offended and told me I love micromanaging. But before, remember, she was a bad communicator. How is she loving micromanaging and also a bad communicator? This woman can't win with this. Dogs Duck says, it blows my mind how incredibly defensive people can get when you do communicate a simple need or a solution-oriented action plan. Is he amenable to really hearing what you communicate? Making a plan together isn't micromanaging. It's the most common sense approach to a solution. When an architect shares blueprints with a builder and a contractor, is that micromanaging? No, the house would never get built without everyone working together from that blueprint. Um, yes, conscious balance says, because it's not about her communicating. It's about him punishing her for wanting anything from him. A list is explicit communicating. Com 
communication, the thing he accused her of being poorly at. To me, this tells me the man is complaining about something, not about communication. She wants him to have din her dinner and breakfast because it's the only meal she eats at home. At this point, it's been communicated, so what's stopping him now? Now he knows the need and still refusing to fulfill it. This again tells me it's more about punishing her for something than her not communicating the needs. And then Khaleesi says exactly this. It was never about communication. He simply hasn't wanted to feed or clothe her and has gaslit her into believing she is the problem. Okay. Someone in the comments explained what was going on because I'm like, what is the problem? And for some people who act like women are not logical, she, she had logic here. She saw a problem, communicated it, and now she's like, what is going on? I can't figure this out because he doesn't want to. He wants to punish her for something and he's not cluing her in. Now we know. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. So let's move into the nice guy subreddit. NGVC stands for nice guy virtue claim. And she puts in quotes, my emotions are 100% in check. Now let's just say I doubt that his emotions are 100% in check. But let's read the screenshots. Okay, nice guy. What do you typically go for in a person? She says emotional intelligence and humor. And he's like emotional intelligence. What does that mean? First time hearing that from someone. <laughs> oh, she says self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. He's like, my, my emotions are 100% in check. He's like, no worries there. No worries. He says social skills, but I hate people and I get very flustered in a panic. You seem pretty genuine, though. Would love to know you. And she says, thank you. And he does this little, um, he says, of course. And he says, planning on sleeping soon, I hope. Now, just right here. He says he has social skills and he hates people and he gets flustered in a panic. That does not seem very socially regulated to me. But, okay, let's, let's continue. So she did not respond on planning on sleeping soon, I hope. She didn't respond. So the next morning, you see this says 6.58 a.m. He said, laughing my effing butt off, what did I do? Okay. And here you are ghosting. That's crazy, bro. You're something else. It's A-OK. -okay. The more I looked at you, the more you were really fat because you're a fat F. Lose some weight. Also, your kids are ugly as F. <laughs> She's like, I fell asleep. Oh, my God. So off the bat, where she told him emotional intelligence is important, and he's like, what do you mean? And she says self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. And he didn't know what this meant. That should have been the first red flag. And then you see that he flipped that switch immediately because she wasn't available to immediately respond to him. <laughs> so his social skills, his self-regulation... Those are X'd off of the list. All right, some of the comments. Pretty sure he, he meant 100% in need of a check. Um, Re Regrettable Biscuit says he crashed, he cashed that check immediately. And Auntie K said it bounced. Um, Bel Belia Gulf says, what the hell compels people to be so horrific like that dude? Like he really, he literally could have just not said any of that. Bayou Blue responds, they know they're horrid people and they hate to be figured out so soon. When they think they have someone talking and then the person goes silent, they automatically take it as rejection. While most normal people would assume that person has a life, you know, work and school and family, they end up showing very, very low emotional intelligence and then they attack. I bet the next thing they said was something like, I didn't mean any of that, followed by an excuse why it's all women's fault. He's like that. Um, Pearls Before Dogs says, failed his emotional intelligence role immediately after having the term defined for him. Exactly. Nice Guy says, it reads as raging insecurity. I don't like what this person at the bottom does, hot tension. He, he or she is blaming it on autism. They say, it's part of a growing stage in life, I think, or autism. I don't like that. Like, why do people continue to put these ill-regulated males 
put just diagnose them with autism or something neurodivergent. I don't like this at all. Some of these people just have no emotional intelligence because they were not socialized to have some emotional intelligence. Lonely Octopus says, is it F? Nice guys of all ages do this. They never grow out of it. And autism has nothing to do with it whatsoever. Um, this is not how you pronounce it says, this is the second time this week I've seen someone use the autism excuse. I have loved ones who are autistic, have had many more acquaintances that were people with autism. A couple of coworkers I interact with daily, even none of them have behaved this way. I'm not saying it's not possible, but this is not an autistic trait. If someone with autism does act like this, it has nothing with them being on the spectrum. Please stop saying it's autism. It's not right. Th that's how I feel about it. I don't really know people who are autistic. I don't think. I mean, not that have told me. But to continue to lay this on autistic men or, you know, give men this out, it's just an excuse. All right, so I'm moving to another nice guy post. This nice guy virtue claim was, but I asked nicely but I asked nicely I have a feeling that he did not ask nicely but let's look at this screenshot hey sweetie 20 year old male here want to have some fun maybe give me J-O-I now what is J-O-I I had to look that up J-O-I stands for jerk off instructions if you didn't know that's what J-O-I stands for if you see that now you know um, the person responds with, if you are that desperate to jerk off, just watch corn. Don't DM random people that you don't know. And then the nice guy says, wow, seems like you're not shy as your bio says, LOL. You could be, you could be nice. Anyways, you don't have to be like that. I asked nicely. She says, I am shy, just that I have my boundaries set. I am not a sex toy, especially with unknown people. So go ask someone else. The nice guy, girl, keep your attitude to your effing self. You don't have to be such a B-word, acting rude. You little poop, you little poopy head. <laughs> he didn't say that. This is what he said. You little poop F. That's what he says. And then he says, bye, B-word. Um, <laughs> she says, see you never, incel. How do you ask nicely to some for someone to give you a J-O-I? How do you ask that nicely? And where do they get this audacity that they could just jump into a random person's inbox and ask this type of um, explicit type of request? So this person is responding to the not as shy as your bio said, saying basically admitting he knew what he was doing was creepy and was hoping you were too shy to tell him. Penguin Unhand says the obvious things wrong here is the creeptastic idiot asking a random person for whatever the F J O I is, along with ending the message in the usual nice guy trademark way. But the other thing wrong here is messaging her at 2 effing AM. I just can't tell if these guys are this effing socially clueless or they're being creeps intentionally. And then this is where somebody tells us what J O I means right there. And she says, no need to thank me for giving you knowledge you'd rather not have. <laughs> um, Ranzolo says, terrible time to have eyes and a brain. And then this person says, also a bad time to be literate. Total distribution says, J-O-I. And then she shows a meat grinder grinding up some meat. And that is where I'm going to end this nice guy post. Hope that you guys have enjoyed it. Go ahead and jump into the comments and let me know what you think about these two sets of screenshots. So I don't know if this counts exactly as a palette cleanser, but it is a little levity. Public Domain Kitty says, let's play a game. Men can't do household chores because, so fill in the blank, but she says, with wrong answers only. So wrong answers only. Why can't men do household chores? Leela says, because they're too busy providing for us. And Public Domain Kitty says, ouch. Fawcett says, they're too busy lobbying governments to legalize and protect abortion access and enshrine no-fault divorce so it can never be removed as an option. Kitten says, boom. Fappy Ending says, they don't own houses anymore. And she's like, oh, that slapped. Careless Balance says, the logic in their testicles makes repetitive movements uncomfortable. I didn't know that. Cat bus for ants says household chores took men out of the home. 
No, Frick says, because it's a right. Their body, their choice. Mama Chatter Thoughts says, oh, come on, sis. It's the testosterone. Those big manly hands can't wash the dishes without breaking them. And it's not their fault. Blame it on nature. I barely got this typed out without cackling. Uh, Miami Child says they're too busy chopping wood, building houses, plowing fields, and taking care of the horses and carriages, etc., etc., etc. Disastrous Basis says they went to buy cigarettes and got lost on the way home. So um, my Bourbon Bougie subreddit is still growing. So we only got a few answers, a few comments. So here is where you get to comment. Why can't they do household chores? Wrong answers only. Join the conversation. Don't forget to like, comment, share. If you made it this far and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit the follow button.